Welcome to Blue Moon Life. We're Jillian and Jonas, and we live aboard our 30-foot sailboat. Recently, we've taken on the project of converting a van to take us across the country. If you enjoy these videos, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to follow us on our adventures. Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of our van build series. In this video, we show you how we build our rock and roll bed. One of the things that makes this rock and roll bed a little bit different is that we actually customized the frame to a mattress that we found. So we've been watching some YouTube videos and different van conversions, and a theme we've been noticing is that a lot of people say one of the most expensive parts of their van is their mattress because they build custom beds and they need to make get a custom mattress built, so they need, you know, custom foam cut and then usually you want a cover for that and then custom sheets so we actually kind of built the van around our mattress and in the long run i think it saved us a ton of money we just got this mattress online it's a tri-fold mattress um, and it was 170 dollars canadian altogether um, it's a standard twin size mattress which is great because it makes it easier for us to get sheets and bedding. So it's just 4 inch foam, super comfortable, it has a removable and washable cover which is also really nice. We decided to go with a rock and roll bed for our bed frame. We wanted to be able to fold the bed into like a couch setup um, to give us more space in the front of the van and then also be able to fold it down obviously to sleep on. But we built our rock and roll bed frame to the size of our mattress, which I think saved us a lot of hassle in the long run. Yeah, so the, the rock and roll folds in the same spots as the mattress and so it'll just, yeah, it folds up really nicely. Most rock and roll beds are built in four pieces because the idea is that the, the back piece holds them steady. We're just gonna hinge the back piece on a support piece of wood, just a little piece. That does mean that the mattress, or I guess when the bed is folded into couch mode, it's gonna be a little higher, um, but we've kind of been testing it out. We can still see out the back, and worst case scenario, like when we're city driving and stuff, we'll just have the bed down uh, when we're driving so we have clear view out the back. So these are the two by twos we're using to build the rock and roll um, bed platform, like the sleeping platform. We have six longer pieces, which will sort of build the frame, and then 12 shorter pieces, which will be just support beams in between. We calculated each platform length and width based on the dimensions of the folding mattress that we bought. So these are the three sleeping platforms laid out. We just made rectangles and then two crossbars in between, and then eventually on top of these we'll lay plywood so it'll be a nice sturdy platform for the mattress. This is the finished platform. We glued and screwed the wood pieces together into three separate panels, and then we attached those using hinges. And the way it works is this will fold up. This part will come in. The bed will fold up into more of a couch when we're looking for more living space. And then when we're ready to sleep, we'll just be able to lower it down. To connect the two panels, that will make the bench seat, basically. So the panel that we'll sit on and the panel that'll be the backrest. We use two T-hinges. Now flipping it over to the back side of the bed frame, we just use butt hinges. And this is basically what forms the V, where the backrest folds in half. So the next step for this project is we've cut 
We've cut three separate pieces of plywood to fit on top of each panel, and that'll make sure that the bed frame is really sturdy and that the mattress itself doesn't warp, and it'll have a nice, a nice flat, strong frame for us to be able to sleep on and sit on. The hinges did create a little bit of a gap here, but we're gonna take a belt sander and put a 45 degree angle bevel on it. And so when the bed actually folds up, these two pieces won't bind and it'll create a better fit. We used a countersink so when we screwed the plywood to the frame, the screws wouldn't crack and splinter the plywood. Also, this allowed the screws to sit flush with the plywood. We pre-drilled holes in the plywood, then attached it using screws. Next step was to sand down the rough edges. Then we used wood filler to fill the screw holes and knots in the plywood and gave it one last sand before painting the bed frame to help protect it and give it a more finished look. So we've filled, sanded, and now we're gonna paint the bed frame. Uh, we're just going with white because our theme for the build is sort of like black and white and wood. So yeah, we throw a layer of paint on now. We've been going back and forth a lot over the last few days about the configuration and where we want everything to be. Um, we've been playing around with mainly where we want the bed and how that will determine where our storage will be. I think we finally landed on positioning the bed right up against this far wall, so the driver's side wall. Then we can have lots of storage on this side. We can keep the use of those cup holders and things. And it's nice to be right close to the window and I think in the long run, if we want to put anything really big in these boxes, it's going to give us more space here as opposed to having a small storage and small storage. We'll just have one big one. And for the storage on this side, it's kind of going to act as like a table as well. So we're going to build it right up to the height of just underneath the window because we don't want to lose any of our windows. That's sort of one thing that's important to us is we love having lots of windows that we can look out of mm -hmm. as well as when we're driving in the city it's really nice to sort of minimize blind spots so for the height of the bed we're actually sort of limited by the wheel well since it's going to be right over top of the wheel well um and that has actually worked pretty good i mean i've got lots of height 
Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. So yeah, we figured if the bed is sitting just on top of the wheel well, that gives me plenty of headroom and then also Jonas headroom. Since you're the taller one, you're deciding um, the height of everything. <laughs> but it's super important because we don't want to be crunched up in our space, you know, when it's like a rainy day or we're doing work in here. Yeah. We want to be able to actually sit up properly, especially since we obviously can't stand in here. Yeah. We want to be able to stretch out a little bit. Close up here. How'd you do? Pretty good. <laughs> So we're starting to cut the pieces for our bed box, which will be sort of start framing some of the storage areas and then also support the bed frame, which we've already built. So for the base of the bed box, we're using two by fours. We wanted something nice and strong because these are gonna be the supports for our slide out drawers and two by twos just wouldn't quite support them enough. They'll likely hold a fair amount of weight so we didn't want those to be wobbly or break. And then on top of the bed box, we're just using two by twos. So we've started out by cutting three sets of wood that'll go lengthwise in the van. For the legs of our bed box, we're actually just gonna use two by fours. Um, so they're, you know, three and a half inches wide and then we'll cut them to the height that we need and then we'll have our two by twos on top. Got the legs cut. Oh yeah. <laughs> These are our little riser pieces to get the height we want. We'll have the two by four on the bottom. Then these riser pieces, and then on top, the bed will sit there. We want a nice finished piece of wood on the end. Instead so, of having raw edges. Instead of having raw edges. So on the end we're just going to have one piece of 2x2, two two, so it's going to be a nice clean look on the end. Just like with the bed frame, we glued and screwed the ladders together to form the base of our bed box. We're saving literally hundreds of dollars. And in here. Nice. Oh yes! Flip. Things in place. So now that we have the ladders built, we just sort of set up the rock and roll bed. We've moved this third ladder in between, and that'll allow us to have two drawers. So if we come to the back, now if you look, we have one slightly bigger drawer, one slightly smaller drawer, and then all this space in here is going to be just a bunch of storage, just kind of like a big chest of storage. How's the height? It's oh, it's perfect height. Yeah, it is. Wow. Yeah, because that's that'll give me room for the mattress. And then the other important thing that we wanted is we wanted a bit of overhang for where we sit, because otherwise you're sort of banging your heels against the box. The three ladders for our bed box um, hit the mat, and since the mat is like I don't know, like a sixteenth of an inch higher, we're actually just cutting out slots the exact size of the 2 by 4 so they'll kind of fit in the floor um, so it's not all teetery and also we're going to be gluing these ladders down to the wood and it doesn't really glue them that very well. Okay so now that we have all of these little slits cut we're trying to figure out how we're going to build this bed box. This is where we're leaving it for a little while. We have glued down the three ladders. 
and we've placed just temporary braces across them to hold them square. There's one up there as well, and then just bricks to actually weigh the whole thing down. And we're just waiting for the glue to dry. Um, we spent like a lot of time making sure that these are square up and down, but also that they're square to each other. Since we are going to put drawers in here, we want to make sure that they're the same distance apart all the way along, otherwise the drawers won't slide smoothly. Okay, so it's the next morning now. We've removed the uh, temporary bracing structure, and we're going to put in, start putting in our, our permanent block. This is going to stay open. And because that's where we can access our jack, we'll be able to stuff things in there. And then we're thinking we'll probably leave this open as well. Um, so we can access this and get in. Uh, we think we might put a water jug there. We're going to add rubber to this space here. Um, we weren't sure what we would do with that in the beginning. So we're going to cut these to fit. And then they'll just lay in there and give us a nice space on that part. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. This is... These, these give... Uh, the structured everything and they're glued down they're not going anywhere um, and so now we can build everything else around it and they'll be like our support structure rock and roll bed only has three platforms. This is sort of acting as our fourth platform which will hinge up and allow the bed to actually fold into the couch. We're just using a piece of 2x6 which will actually act as like a little countertop, especially since we're going to have drawers that pull out here. We're going to do a lot of our cooking in the back, um, so that's why we chose this 2x6 and it'll be just a nice little counter to put things on. And then the reason we're putting a layer of half inch plywood underneath the 2x6 is because we want to build it up so it's the same height as the bed frame because the bed frame is built from 2x2s and then plywood on top of that. Um, so this will make it nice and flush and allow us to hinge up the bed frame. This is just wood glue. We're going to put some on here and then it'll laminate these together and we'll screw them to hold. That looks awesome. There she be. So we're just putting the drawer slides in. Um, they slide out like this and then you mark through the holes here. Now we put a 2x4 in to just rise it up a little bit. And so we can get the spacing even on both sides. Mm -hmm. And then we'll slide these out like this and then screw in. That's cool. Two drawer slides. Decent. So our bed box is coming along really, really well. Um, we're just putting the slides in for our two sliding drawers. And in the front of the bed box, we have, what is it, maybe like a f one or two feet of cubby space. And to sort of block off the cubby space from the drawer space, we just put some plywood um, blocks here basically to box it off. We're not going to put plywood on the inside, A, to give us a little more space because that extra inch really counts and also we are going to be facing the outsides of these boxes so they'll kind of look so you'll be able to see the two by fours on the inside but not on the outside one of the main reasons we wanted to make sure we blocked off these cubbies is because when you're shoving things in we didn't want it to get caught up in the drawer and have you know jams door jams so it's coming along slowly but surely um we're yeah we're getting there <laughs> I'm going to make our drawer boxes out of uh, three quarter inch plywood and because it's 2021 and plywood is $70 a sheet, we made a plan here 
uh, for all the, uh, all the different pieces we're going to need. Um, so we're going to roughly plan them out on the plywood and then we'll have to cut them on the table saw. But this will give us an idea of how much of the sheet we want to use. And we have some other perp we have some other needs for this plywood after the drawers as well. So we're hoping to sort of maximize uh, the use of it. Some serious math work going on over here. Ernie. So, it's mine. I don't know. Coffee break. Oh, yeah. Here are the pieces of our boxes. Cut and ready to be assembled. First box is uh, just kind of tacked together right now. We have the bottom and then the two sides we glued on. It's upside down obviously right now. Um, but we glued the two sides on and then we're just stapling it with crown staples. Um, we tacked on a few to make sure the box is really square and now we're just gonna fill in the staples to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Cause these boxes are gonna hold a lot of weight um the slides that we have are suited up to 100 pounds so we want to make sure that the boxes can also withstand a bunch of weight will it fit she will oh that's nice sweet. wow perfect fit we didn't leave much room between the drawers and the top and the bottom, so we've just cut really thin little pieces and we're going to use these to put underneath the drawers to space them so there's a little bit of room at the bottom and a little bit of room at the top so they can slide easily. Both drawers are now installed and on slides. Uh, we just screwed this down to the top. This is sort of our fourth panel of our rock and roll bed, which we're gonna hinge the bed frame to. And now we're gonna bring the bed frame in and we're gonna put it on hinges and our rock and roll bed and bed frame is just about done. Okay, so we are working on finishing our drawers in the back of the bed. And we wanted some sort of system to make sure they're not flying open, like if we're parked on a bit of a slant at a park or something, um, we want to make sure the doors stay closed when we want them to stay closed. And what we're using for that is actually just little magnets. We found these circular magnets. So we're going to flush mount them, so we just drew, um, drilled a little hole the same width as our magnet. And that'll go in there. And then we'll do the... That will sit in there eventually. And then we'll do the opposite on this side. And we also just want to make sure we line them up, obviously. So we measured to the center of the drawer, drew a little line, open it up, measured down to a certain height. And then these, when the door closes, we'll keep it closed and then we'll be able to open them too. But we're epoxying these magnets into the holes. Um, it's important to make sure you put them so they actually stick together because otherwise the drawers will repel each other. And then, oh my goodness, the screwdriver sticks too. Holy. Wow, this is, these are some sticky magnets. And then put it in. Stick it. We don't want them to like dry together so we'll just put this board in and they can kind of hang out in there. Like that. Let those dry. The legs are going on the bed, finally. This is the last main piece. So to attach the legs to the bed, we just drilled a big hole through both the bed frame and the leg. And then we're using carriage bolts to hold them down. And then a lock nut and a washer and we'll tighten that.
So we have two sets of legs on the bed. We have the front ones, which will stay put. These are gonna be fixed legs. And then closer towards the hinge, we actually have swinging legs. So they swing out when the bed's down like that. And that supports this hinge here when the bed is down in bed mode. And then when we flip the bed up into couch mode, this leg swings up. And then this doesn't get caught up when the bed frame slides onto the bed box to form the couch. And they're snugged in pretty tight. Uh, and yeah, because of the rubber there, this shouldn't, shouldn't get any looser than it is now. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed seeing how we built this bed and keep an eye out. We will be putting videos out of the rest of our builds, putting some final touches on and also a van tour at the end of it.